Yo, so th here we are now on the other side of the room. Millie, how are you doing today? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you, Beto, for including me. I'm so excited and so happy to meet Grace. She's so beautiful and I love her accent. Uh-huh. <laughs> and oh. do you know that Grace is also our little girl's name? Our little girl's middle name? Her oh, name is beautiful. Melody Grace. Mm -hmm. So Melody we feel Grace. the connection. Now on this side, I'm going to remove my glasses. <laughs> and we'll continue with the show. This is so cool. Okay, so Grace, you are in Australia, right? Mm -hmm. And you started a podcast, and it's called Hallelujah Podcast. And part of what we do here is we want to feature other podcasters. Sometimes other podcasts are, I mean, they're all over the spectrum of what I call the beliefometer. Uh, but in this case, I felt like, man, like she's on the divine emoji to me. Like when I was listening to your podcast and watching it, because you're on YouTube, I'm like, this is legit. This was so amazing. But let's kick it off the conversation with that. Like, how did you get to starting Hallelujah podcast? And maybe why Hallelujah? Yeah, yeah. Well, it's such a good story because I, when I was growing up as a kid, I just had the most awful anxiety of answering phones, talking to people, public speaking. So it's been a real journey and blessing from God as well. Just I've, I've really seen his hand over my life, just especially in the past few years in terms of getting into the workplace and just the different jobs he had me in, which really helped equip me to be able to speak because never in a million years did I ever think or want anything to do with public speaking, anything like that. So it's, it's been a real, a real blessing and encouragement from God. But for a, a little bit of context, and I'm, I'm sure we'll chat more about my story later on, but long story short, I grew up in a Christian home, fell away for about eight years from middle of high school to outside of university. And throughout that whole season, I just completely walked away from my faith, just living in the world. And I, I felt God knocking at the door through, through a lot of that season. But I was, I guess I was just so enjoying just living you know living with the the lust and the desires of our flesh so i'd really turned away from god in that time uh, but through a breakup i came back to faith and just over the the next few years god really was refining me in terms of my my character and my walk with him and then eventually it got to the point where i started to really think more about God, what do you what do you want me to do? Like I'm I'm feeling more mature in my faith. I love talking and, and sharing my faith with people, but on what capacity do you want me to do this ministry wise? Mm -hmm. And we spoke about it a couple of weeks ago when we first met, but I actually had a prophetic word that was really key in my life that I guess planted a lot of those seeds about starting to to speak and share my faith. So I sat on that for about four years and and one day, I, I don't know, I just, I, I really felt God put it in my heart to, to start a podcast and then, you know, it goes on the journey of looking into more of what a podcast is. I'd never done anything like that. I didn't even listen to podcasts. And yeah, from there, it really just started the journey of, I guess, when God put something in your heart and it, you know, when it sits right, it's like, oh, it's a mm. bit daunting, but let's go, you know, let's start start seeing what this might look like and mm. then yeah it was just a step of faith and it, it's been such a fun journey as well i've just absolutely loved it and i'm sure you guys have, have felt similar as well yeah and why did you choose the name hallelujah how did that come about or was that part yeah. of the prophetic word or no <laughs> no no it wasn't actually i remember at the time i was training for there's a there was a, a 30k kokoda track um a, like a, a challenge that i was doing with some friends and and we were out training there's this beautiful mountain mount kutha near where i live and so i would be going out for these you know six seven hour walks to to train and there was one weekend that i was there by myself because i'd missed i'd missed the the pass one that we'd done so i was there i thought this is great i love being in nature you know when i'm out walking out in god's creation i that's where i feel him speaking to me best so you know i'm there i'm walking and i'm just praying and i'm going all right you know, what, maybe what kind of name, you know, what do I want for my intro? And yeah, it was just that one walk. I'd, I'd written down about 10 different names and I didn't have reception at the time. And one of the ones that I had was um, Hallelujah Podcast. It was one of the last ones that I went through. Mm. So I checked all the other ones and they were all taken, like all the different names. There was like Bible Bites and all these different 
Christian podcast was taken. Yeah, yeah, Christian, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But they were all taken. And then I remember um, like hallelujah. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. And I was like, that'll be taken for sure. Mm-hmm. Looked it up. No other hallelujah podcast, not the hallelujah podcast, not hallelujah, not hallelujah podcast. And I thought, yeah, that's the one. So I bought the domain, got the Instagram handles and yeah, that w- that was how I that was how wow. that all came about. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Okay, that's let me turn down my uh, volume a little bit because it's, it's really loud, but I'll be right back. I feel that that is... Yes, yes. That's how it works. But that happened yeah. the same thing with us. Like, Beto, we started with so many names, you know, and actually we did one, oh, Beto was doing one, hell no podcast. <laughs> Yeah, mm. <laughs> like crazy names, and they're like, oh, "How about Christian podcasts?" And yeah. we were so impressed, and nobody, nobody yeah. was using it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and we thought, "Oh, with this name, it's gonna be boom!" And right away, people is gonna know. Yeah. It was like, <laughs> and it's been, it's been a it crazy, takes a time, you a know, while. like yeah. three years, and yeah. it's it's yeah, it's about a time. Yeah. It's not the name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. that's encouraging it's, to hear, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. and you know what? I'll think- say I'll say something about the name, the Christian podcast name. Mm. I was listening to like a very popular show here in the U.S. called Bad Christian Podcast, and it was very oh. like deconstruction, and the guys were like really pushing the envelope on like the topics they were talking about. So mm. I appreciated the like the sincerity of talking about anything. But at the same time, I mean, they were really deconstructing, you know, like almost like like blaspheming basically mm. in every episode. And yeah. and I thought, what if there was one where we kind of like take out the bad? So if you take mm. out bad, it just leaves you Christian podcast. And that's actually mm. how it started. You know, that's, yeah. that's where the idea came. Like, let's just take out the bad and see yeah. what happens. Um, but anyways, you were going to say something right when I was saying this. Yeah, yeah, I was just saying that's that's encouraging and that's good because two points. One, you know, I think sometimes when you feel like God has called you to something, you automatically assume that you're going to reach all these people straight away and, mm. you know, God's called me to do this or do that. But I love that there really is that journey of just being so faithful, whether it's one person listening, whether it's 10, 100 or a million. And I think when, when, we, when we show that character that – what God has given us, no matter whether it's big or small, when we can be faithful with that, mm. then as God lifts us up, then we know we can, I guess, be trusted with that as well. Mm. So that's that's one part that I love about your story. And then, yeah, even just with the names, I think I think it's lovely just to be able to trust God on the journey of you feel to start, you know, you feel called to start a podcast and you trust him, even in the little things like the name mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. The logo, what you want to chat about. And I think it really just shows God's faithfulness in whatever he's called you to. He will guide you on the path the whole way. He will just open up the right doors and just so much favor and guidance. So, yeah, it's, yeah I love that that's a part of your story and journey mm-hmm. as well. Yeah, that's so cool. And even like you said, right, the the prophetic word, like you said, it, you kind of like chew on it for like four years. I mean, that's, mm. that's a long time. But that's also, I mean, would you expand a little bit on what, maybe that prophetic word was like that was it um yeah sure yeah i don't know I, we would just love to hear your experience yeah. yeah yeah definitely so when i came back to faith so i'm 25 years old now i was 21 years old when i came back so i felt like i was old but looking back now it was you know i was still quite young so i'm i'm very very thankful for that 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 period i had away was when i was quite young but that was in the like Christmas season of 2019, so around the, I think, 2nd of December that I came back to faith. And it might have only been a few months after that that I, I'd gotten a, a prophetic word as a, I think, as a gift or my mum had a connection with someone. And the word was about being like a, a voice for this generation. Mm. And I, I believe that God calls us all to be a voice for this generation. So in, in no way do I think that, you know, God calls one specific person or he's only calling me to be a voice. But it was still such a, a key prophetic word for me that me, who hates speaking, hates calling people, hates picking up the phone, anything to do with anything public speaking and speaking i just couldn't stand it couldn't do it but the fact that god who created 
all things who created me. He sees me enough mm. and, and sees sees my heart and go, this is, you know, this is the, this is the plan. This is the call that I have for you. So it was about being a voice um, for this generation. And then there was a portion of it as well about, it was like being a voice for the people who have no voice. And I think it was around something to do with homelessness as well. So when I joined my current church, I've ended up being quite involved with some different outreach for that, which maybe that's what it was talking about. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I think mm -hmm. we can keep sitting on prophetic words yeah. Um, but yeah I sat on it for probably three like two and a half three years and then when I felt kind of felt called to start a podcast it it all just lined up and I guess it was that nice confirmation that I had that I'd been sitting on it you know I think sometimes God almost like prepares our spirit quietly before it's mm -hmm. like all right it's time to time to step out now <laughs> yeah that's great yeah. Um, my my experience with prophetic words, I, I feel like I had one when I was like 17 or 18, like I was no, a teenager. Uh, mm. But then Millie, she's like, I, I want a prophetic word. Like, I feel like I've never experienced that, you know. And I, not to say that mine was like when I look back, I, I think it was a prophetic word, but it wasn't like I'm giving you a prophetic word. It was just like yeah. a guy speaking into like my heart and it, mm -hmm. it felt very... Um, like authentic because I was, mm -hmm. I was praying to God. And then this guy, not out of nowhere, cause we were in a meeting where, you know, you're praying and there's worship and, you know, that was the point, you know, to connect with God. But it was, it, it was interesting cause I was so, um, engaged with my conversation with God. And then I said, I'm not going to live here until you bless me. And, yeah. you know, some minutes passed and then I'm like, I'm not going to leave until you bless me. <laughs> and then this Come man, on. you know, I mean, the, 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 the place was packed. You know, there were like, I don't know, 300 people like in the front of the, you know, the stage. Um, so the guy that was preaching eventually got to where I was when I was saying <laughs> this, you know. So he got me up and he gave me, you know, a few, a few like prophetic words, I guess. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, you know, I'm going to use you and your dad. Uh, you know, for, for my glory or for my kingdom, or I can't remember exactly. Right. But I'm going to, what I remember is I'm going to use you and your dad. And, and that was here in the U S and my dad, I mean, my dad lives in Mexico. Right. So back then mm -hmm. I thought, well, that's kind of funny because my dad doesn't even live here, mm -hmm. you know, but I, I trusted it. And now mm -hmm. the more I look back, you know, it's been years and years past. And so I love that you said, you know, four years, but mm. this is what I've learned. This might be, I don't know, take it or leave it. I don't know if it's like a new teaching or not, but this is just my take on prophetic words, specifically mine, like the one I've experienced. I realize that it's it's not just something that's going to happen in the future. It's, it's like a journey. It's like a lifetime of God mm. um, actually showing up in your life. That mm. when you look back, it's like, oh, wow, that moment. Like, now I look back in my life and, and I think of moments w even when I was a kid in my relationship with my dad where I feel like, wow, God used my dad in that moment. And then I think of another one. I'm like, wow, God used my dad in that moment. So I feel like the prophetic word expands even more. And it's like, yeah, God's been using you and your dad for a long time because God works in, from generation to generation, right? And from, that's his legacy, that it's not just something that's going to happen to you. It's like, you know, Abraham had this prophecy about like, you're, all the nations are going to be blessed, you know, by you and you know, your, your um, basically your legacy is going to be like as big as the stars. And it's like, well, he didn't really get to see that, but he believed it, right? And he had, I mean, he saw it in faith, and I think that's so profound because I feel like the prophetic could be in the future, but it also could be already in happening. already happening, right? It could have happened mm -hmm. already. And that just mm -hmm. opened my, my eyes to see God working way more than just like, oh, it's something that's going to happen in the future. Like, I, I, mm -hmm. like God doesn't work in, in time constraints, right? Like he works. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. So anyways, that, that was that. You wanted to say something, really? Yeah. I, I think God is so beautiful and we all so different and I feel like every people experience God in different ways. For example, mm -hmm. I don't remember like somebody doing that to me, 
but I have dreams and I have visions. And that's how I connect with God. And that's how I like, oh, I need to do this because I have that. I had this dream. He's talking to me. And I just, and I, for example, one day, you know, uh, like uh, five years ago, I was literally like thinking that God was not real, that Jesus was yes he was here but it's something else somewhere else higher than that so so confusing so lost like i was like in like another world like everything was cold and i was having power but it's like weird 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 season of my life but um when i wake up and i decided to follow jesus and believe that he's god that day I have a vision and I saw my I see myself with Beto with a microphone wow. talking to a like a huge auditory with a lot of people and I thought God I'm not a musician I don't sing like <laughs> not even in the bathroom <laughs> like zero you know he is a musician Beto mm -hmm. can sing, can perform, he plays the guitar, and my kids too now, but me? But I saw myself with a microphone. So when Beto invited me to do podcasts with him, like, I need to be obedient. You know, it's something mm -hmm. that God told me, and maybe, you know, maybe it's not on the stage, but it's here doing podcasts. How millions of people is going to see uh through our eyes or listen to us like only god knows no so every time beto or every year you know like um the statistics is increasing 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 so people is listening to this and sometimes when i grip up people text me thank you for your for your for your prayer thank you for yeah. you know you you inspire me and thanks to that today i see I see again, I, 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 I can see the light. And they're like, mm. oh my gosh, like somebody's listening to this. I need to. And also, I feel like God is good through the podcast, God transformed my life. Mm. Because I want to be congruent. I want to think and say and act just one way, no? Because mm. as a humans, we say, like, yeah, I'm a healthy person and I'm eating so bad like we you know or i'm not a liar and i'm just i'm acting <laughs> they were totally different no and the bible was this guy saying like every time i want to do good i'm always doing yeah. bad you know and so we are that way we're humans but with this thing of christian podcast like god i just want to follow you i just want to be obedient and i know you're gonna do all the good through me you know if something good is in me it's you and he transformed my life and he saved my marriage because i want to be better not just for my husband or for my kids it's just to be good because he's good and he lives in me so yeah yeah love it <laughs> yeah, you want to say something yeah, I just think I love what you said, you know, where you, God can give us a prophetic word or he can give us a dream, but we really get to partner with him in that because you could get those dreams and then you could just sit on it for the rest of your life. Or I could get a, that prophetic word and I could just sit on it and assume that God will make it all happen one day. But I love that we, we always just get to partner with him and, you know, whether it's taking that first step of faith to go out and, you know, buy your microphone or buy the domain or you know whatever it is that god is calling you to uh, i just love that that he we get to do that with him and it's a power of god through us that equips us to do that as well so yeah i, I love that you said that and you know it's god god gave you that but you also get to step out yeah, when, pray, when the opportunity comes and pray for wisdom because the devil can speak here you're too young you're too mm. old you need to be pretty you need to have this mm. and this and that like you're not enough mm. And mm. then we believe that and we lost our power, right? Yeah. Our power, like, no, God sees me, God loves me, and God wants me to work 
for him. Mm -hmm. So no matter what, no matter how you think about me, you're a liar and stop it. Because mm -hmm. I feel like as a Christian, the, the attacks of the devil, they're stronger on us. You know, the people mm. who's already on their side, they're happy and they look fine. Yeah. It's us. Like every day, every morning, it's like we're, we need to put the armor or God, you know, have our shield and be ready to defend ourselves. Because if we mm. listen what he wants for us, that is like he wants to destroy us. And mm. it's not going to happen today. And I feel like every day I need to wake up like that. Not today, devil. Like, get out of here and I'm yeah. going to be okay. It's sometimes it's so heavy, but we're mm. going to be like that, I think, for the rest of our lives because mm. we're in this world, you know, that took me time to realize that whatever we're doing, in, we need to look up mm. and know that we can have eternal home. Mm. And that makes me feel so good that no, no matter what is going on in this world he will rescue me one day and um, and we need to give ourselves and love people and love people around us yeah yeah it's good yeah what a privilege no like I feel like it's a great it's it's I don't know like if you would have been born a hundred years ago or 200 years ago you would have loved different things right and yeah. like i grew up liking cameras i grew up liking you know to taking photos and you know, i went to school for um communications in mexico so mm. uh, it's not it's not that you no know, podcast is my passion is that inspiring people is my passion right and the podcast is is the tools and i mean i do love like cameras and like all that sort of stuff you know in the internet but it's so interesting that god can use those things because he's trying to persuade people to get to know him and to follow him mm -hmm. so what i mean to me it's amazing that you know when i saw you on on youtube it's like wow there's a person who is doing that, right? Like you're responding to God's prompt in your life. And mm. you're saying, how can I, I mean, God transformed me. He gave me hope when I had none. And, uh, you know, you came from a, a broken relationship that brought you back to Jesus. And now mm. your goal is like, I want to share that. And how can mm. I do that? Well, through podcasts and even stepping into like the, the uncomfortable of, You know, like I, I don't, I hate public speaking and now, <laughs> no, now you're doing that like in front of yeah. anybody that can watch your podcast yeah. on YouTube. Right. So, I mean, that's pretty intimidating, yeah, right. But it's, it's also like a step in against your own fear. Mm. Right. And, and saying, no, I mean, there's, there's value in this because, because it, it brought value to my life. Right. So I would love, I mean, I would love to maybe uh, focus a little bit of, on that part of your story, like the, the transformation, because I know some of the episodes I've seen, uh, you're kind of like talking about dating and relationships. And I mean, you're super young still. Right. So it's like a lot of people can relate to that. I mean, like Millie and me, most of the people that are listening to us are like in our age group and maybe people with kids and things like that. Yeah, We can be your parents. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But yeah. it's so cool that, that, um, I mean, you're speaking the language that you know and people resonate to that. Right. So tell us a little bit about that. I don't know how deep you want to go into like the relationship you were in. Right. But, But how do you bring that healing out of that brokenness and, and sharing that with others? Because I think that's so valuable in what you're doing mm. with your podcast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. So for me, what what really I would say made me fall away from my faith was that it was being in an ungodly relationship. So it would it would have been early, or probably towards the end of high school. And, you know, you grow up in a Christian home and it's don't do drugs, don't have sex before marriage, don't drink alcohol, and you... You hear that, but no one, well, in my case, a lot of the time, no one explained the reasons why. So this is God's design or this is why we don't, you know, this is why we don't do drugs or drink alcohol because, you know, there's look at this scripture and, and look at all of this kind of context behind it. So for me, because I didn't have that good foundational knowledge, I, I just got so caught up in, you know, the opportunities that the world presented 
And for me, that just came in the form of being in an ungodly relationship and then getting involved with all of his friendship groups that were big partiers, big drinkers, big drug takers. So that for me, just I guess I just didn't have that foundation. So, you know, as as you go forward and, and move forward in sin, your your flesh desires it, your flesh loves it. And unless you actually know and have the conviction to deny your flesh and deny that and follow Jesus, you know, it's 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 hard. Like your flesh just does does what it does what it wants. So that I, I really believe that being in an ungodly relationship and having sex outside of marriage, I 100% believe that was what caused me to fall away. And then as I continued down that path for years um, in a few long-term relationships, it just, you know, you start off with the Holy Spirit conviction of don't do that. Oh, sorry, Lord. You do it again. Don't, don't do that, Lord. And, and it's the same with all sin, right? Like whatever mm-hmm. sin holds us captive if if you're if you're a christian or if you've got any sense of the holy spirit talking to you you'll have that conviction you'll know it doesn't quite sit right Mm -hmm. but you know it gets quieter and quieter as you continue just to to turn away from god so for me one thing that i vividly remember when i was in the the last relationship that i was in before i came back to faith is in the back of my head i i had this thought or this feeling that I would marry a Christian man. And I was like, that's so weird because I'm not a Christian. This guy's not a Christian. Like I don't I don't know what that is about. But mm. you know, we were talking about marriage as you do when you're young and in love. And then um just like I think it was just God just pursuing me. I I don't think and it, it breaks my heart to say it, but I, I honestly I don't think I would have turned back to God unless it was him pursuing me. And it just shows his grace and his mercy and his goodness for us that even when we're sinners like Christ died for us and he continues to pursue us and I'm like whoa I just I had I really had that revelation a few months ago and I was like man God you are you are so good like as as far away as I was from you you just loved me you pursued me even when I didn't want anything to do with you and yeah it was just one day we'd had a massive fight hadn't spoken for a couple days we met back up and that day we broke up and I, I wasn't thinking of God. I I don't, I don't, I wouldn't have broken up with him to turn back to God. Uh, but it was just me. I, I got back in the car. We'd just broken up. And like right as I sat down in the car, it was like the presence of God just completely filled that space. And it was just like the, I've never felt, it's like the tangible presence of God like that. Mm. There was such a, a weight and it was just the most pure love I have ever felt. And I'm just in the car, like just, breaking down but like that was the exact moment I came home like that was that was just it that was the last barrier that I had up down and yeah I remember just driving home listening to worship music and I just thought what what am I doing but yeah from from there it was just a journey of you know coming coming back but really that that next year or two especially God was just very uh uh, patient with me as I as I started to lay things down, you know, all the things that had held me captive, whether it was um, drinking or like I struggled with self-harm and depression for years and years, mm. almost that whole time that I was away from faith. And yeah, it was just things like that, that he slowly started to, to set me free from, strip back. And yeah, I just got involved in church, you know, started tithing. That was a big thing as well. Just that obedience, like almost as soon as I came back to faith, just starting to tithe. Like, I think it's a, it's, it's not spoken about enough, but it's a really, really important thing. Like if you just every single week giving away that portion of what you earn Mm -hmm. to God, it, it's a, such a good and practical way just to deny yourself every single week. Cause we hold on to stuff. Mm -hmm. So, so tightly. So yeah, so that was that journey. (laughs) How's Oh, how was your relationship with your parents? So you was like no Christian, but your your parents were Christian at that time. They're still Christians, or how a role they've been playing in your life? Yeah. So my mom is she is the most beautiful, faithful Christian woman. Like even when my both my brother and I weren't Christians, um, my dad unfortunately isn't a Christian anymore, but um, but still praying for him. He's I think he's coming a lot closer you know as you do with all your family uh but yeah so I I remember as a kid like I definitely grew up in a Christian home we would go to church like my mum went into labor with me at Hillsong in Sydney so you know (laughs) always always in the church but yeah you know we we would pray together and as a kid I had a 
I think a really sweet and gentle spirit. But as I got older and I guess started to move more into sitting in different areas and just didn't have that relationship with God, I really put a lot of walls up. And I think I had a a really hard and dark heart once I got to more of that teenage phase. So I two loving parents, like not an abusive home at all, beautiful parents, but I, I just didn't connect with them. I didn't let anyone in. So that probably didn't help me either. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So, this is yeah. this is incredible because I think, uh, I mean, I, I, we're not going to go super deep, Millie, because Millie has a, not a similar story, but I guess when you're, mm -hmm. when you're young, right? I mean, you're, you're 25 and... I mean, it's a stage when you just came out of being a teenager, kind of like exploring mm. the world for the really for the first time, like maybe starting your first job. I mean, I was 24 when I came to America, you know, and it's, it was like day and night from what I grew up knowing in Mexico. And then what I've experienced here in the last 18 years, completely different lifestyle altogether, you know, now. I mean, basically, I started my married life here, started having kids, but all of that, it wasn't, um, I guess you always have that desire when, especially when you're in your 20s, maybe, right? Where it's like, wow, I wonder if I'm, I mean, at that point I was single, right? When I was 24, 25, but there's always that, like, who am I going to marry? And I mean, we have a crazy story where we ended up, you know, kind of like becoming a couple. At a, at a retreat where we didn't know what the theme was going to be about, but the theme ended up being like, who am I going to marry? Like that was the title Ooh. of the retreat. <laughs> and that's the time okay. where we became kind of like boyfriend and girlfriend or more like the serious relationship. But I mean, it's so, it, it's hard, right? Because you grew up maybe in the Christian home, uh, like knowing of God, but also mm. at the same time, wanting to experience the world in a sense right and 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 i think you know god created us with the curiosity to explore mm -hmm. to like i wonder if there's something outside of god right but it's so incredible that after experiencing it like you came back to christ and it, it almost seems like not only did you come back to jesus but like you're full in like it's <laughs> i mean mm -hmm. like you know you're tithing now like you're doing all these things that maybe you knew as a as a little kid were good things mm -hmm. but now you've experienced like no like god is good and and out of that response like you do those things now you know so i think that's what god is looking after mm -hmm. not not a heart that knows the good things but a heart oh, that yeah. knows that he is good and responds yeah. out of his goodness right and all the yeah, time, yeah, 100%. all the time I told my kids, whatever bad happened to us, God is going to turn into good. Yeah. You know, so it's experience yeah. and we're learning every day. Mm. Every day we learn to don't be yeah. stupid, <laughs> do stupid <laughs> things <laughs> because it's yeah. easy, but yeah. Uh, what yeah. an epic story. Yeah. You want to say something? Yeah, yeah. So I think, um, and like, I'm, I'm really, really thankful that I had the, I guess, foundation of Christian knowledge as a kid, even though like, I definitely, I was definitely a Christian before. I, there's no way in the world that I think, oh, well, I wasn't ever truly a Christian. And then I came back, I was, I was 100% a Christian. I, uh, like a year ago, I found this beautiful journal from, I have been grade 11 at a Christian camp. And I would go away on these Christian, you know, summer camps, winter camps with friends, and it would be my little week of, you know, praying more and being around Christian friends. And and it, was, it kind of broke my heart, but it was beautiful. In the journal, I'd I'd written down at one of those like I love the person that I am here. Like when I'm when I'm at these Christian camps, I I love that. I love being surrounded by these people. I love who I am, mm -hmm. and I I wish I could have that when I went back to school in the real world. So I think for me, I'm I'm very thankful that I had that foundation, but it, it then meant that when I came back, because I'd had so much time away from my faith, I had a bit of a foundation, but because I knew just the goodness of God that I was able to come back and just be all in, like I, I had that base foundation, then I could grow it and just be all in instead of, you know, kind of lukewarm sitting on the fence. Cause I was like that for a while. And then I totally fell away. But then when I came back, it was like, no, I'm, I'm doing this. I'm doing this for real. And yeah, the world leaves you so empty. You think there's all mm. these things out there 
hate when you go exploring and it'll fulfill you. It just leaves you so empty and it's it's just awful. Like the being a Christian, even though it can, you know, we're not totally exempt from trials or tribulations, the mm. the goodness of God that you have in that as he delivers you through that. Like I've I've learned just to love trials it's such a joy mm. being tested and in trials because you mm. you grow you know that endurance that you have yeah so you will never find any fulfillment in the world maybe temporarily but you'll you'll only find fulfillment for your flesh but it'll leave you feeling so empty and lost mm -hmm. so yeah wow and your name is grace so you mm -hmm. it's almost like you experienced what it means right what grace means oh yeah And that, that's a beautiful story. And I'm sure, you know, God's going to continue to use it and develop it and um, mm -hmm. maybe expand on that prophecy of you speaking. And so I want to congratulate you, you know, for taking that step, for overcoming that fear, for almost like surrendering it all to Christ. And, you know, Jesus is, is so awesome. And I think, you mm -hmm. know, he's going to continue to open doors. And I want to say a little bit, you know, kind of like where where we are going as a company right here. It's called Christian Podcast LLC. And something we're going to try to do this year together, which is exciting, is uh, we want to empower other podcasters and especially, you know, people who, who want to showcase Jesus through media. Mm -hmm. So when I found you, I'm like, Millie, I think we should do something, you know, and we've always dreamed like, Um, what if we could empower other people in other, even like other countries, right? Other places of the world. And I think one way we can do that, which is, is not hard because we have a website is like, let's, let's welcome hallelujah podcast to like the network, you know, so feature it on our page and maybe, you know, help each other grow, um, whatever we can do on our end, you know, to maybe, you know, help your podcast be You no, know, reach the audience that it's trying to reach and be more successful. And like I we want to love to pray and fast, mm. so I can mm. I can hold you and I can pray for you and fast for mm. you and be your, mm. you know, because we live in such a, a spiritual world, mm. you know, yeah. because we're not fighting with each other, you know, we're mm. fighting with the devil, and he lost mm. already. You know, yeah. so I love to fast and pray and I would love to do that for you. I feel like, you know, that can be my call mm -hmm. too. I love to do podcasts, yeah. but I would love to see people like you, you know, with that passion to support mm -hmm. in any way. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's so good. I mean, I love it. I think that's that's what God is doing nowadays. You know, he's. I really believe Like the next revival is is happening already, but it's it's also happening through media. Like I think mm. God is using mm -hmm. the tools we have and part of that is media, you know, so I'm excited for like you no know, new TV shows that talk about Jesus or movies that are coming out that you know have Christian centered messages and they're really relevant, you know, the the production quality is being elevated. So I think that's that's my dream and my passion for Christian podcast is the same thing, you know, to To grow mm -hmm. the brand, but those so that it can be more impactful, and people will look to it and see Jesus behind it, and not just you know a podcaster or a face or Millie and mm -hmm. me, right? But really see like, wow, these guys have something different, you know. And even though their stories, I mean, their stories are complex. Like you just told us your story, we share our story on our Spanish show so many times, you know. So it's a crazy story, still developing, you know, but. Um, God uses you no know, willing vessels, so it's so cool. So with that, I just want to welcome you, you know, to to ChristianPodcast.com. We, you know, we want to walk with with you and say how can we, you know, leverage the name mm -hmm. and help you your podcast grow and maybe have you no know, dream guest or whatever, you know. So as much as we can help, we're here to support you. We're here to help mm -hmm. you out with a little bit of the knowledge that we've garnered through the years which is i mean yeah. it's a little bit you know we've been doing it this for a while uh, yeah. so that's really exciting and yeah. so i want to leave it at that i don't know if you want have any comments and then i guess we'll end with the emojis but before we get there like what would be your last last thing you want to say on that yeah well It's such a blessing. And you said it just before. I think when we, you know, when we step out and do what God is calling us to, there's God just opens doors. Mm. And it, it's it's one of those beautiful things. It's like, you know, we're all, it's like, I'm just, I'm 25. I'm like, I'm, I'm 
I'm, I'm no one, but I'm someone in Christ. But God just opens these doors. Like he, he brings people into your path to encourage you, pray for you, support you. And, and he does you in other people's lives as well. Like you are like, there's people that I can go and encourage and pray for and help them in what God is calling them to. So I love that. It's like, as, as the body of Christ, you know, mm. we're all a different part and you know some of us some of us are in the podcasting space some of us are in media or news radio whatever that looks like but I just love that I love that God is he's raising Christians up together it's not just individual people but it's yeah so I love that and it's it's been such a blessing and such an open door just just to chat you guys and Millie to meet you as well such an honor today and I just I'm so encouraged by especially seeing like christian men and women like married couples doing this together i'm like that's what i want like it's 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 so beautiful like seeing people do ministry together what a joy what an honor and yeah so i i love what you guys are doing too and it is challenging (laughs) (laughs) because imagine sometimes like we're we're fighting and we're mad and like we disagree and things but then we need to go and take a walk and talk and come over and put our you know forgive ourselves <laughs> forgive mm-hmm. me you know and and fix things because we are the example right and mm-hmm. and we're not perfect and we're humans but we love each other and we mm-hmm. try to obey god and i remember at the beginning i was doing my own thing on facebook mm-hmm. i will do my own little mini podcast but i was like so hard so hard and Mm -hmm. i would record myself like 20 times like no i'm so tired i'm gonna stop doing this but still people was telling me thank you for praying for us thank you for doing this like Mm -hmm. i know i need to do this and then one time one day i came over with beto Beto, it's because it's not about me and Mm. these i need we are one I need to do it with you. You need to come over or I need to go or like we need to do something about it. But it's not just me. We need to do this together. And mm. that's how like I forced myself at the beginning was hard. We, we do this once a week. And Beto was like, Millie, we have a podcast and I will plan things. And I forgot about the podcast. Now it's like, no, my podcast is first. Mm. Because now this is who I am. And m- maybe, like you say, I-, I feel like I'm not so little. I- I'm 42 years old. Mm. And sometimes I believe that I don't have enough knowledge. But guess what? I have a testimony. Mm. And I know Jesus. I think mm. that's, that's enough. That's mm. enough to tell the world that God is real because he works in my heart and in my brain. So that's insane. And and talk about the transformation and talk about the peace that gives in your heart nothing mm. and no one give it to you. Just Jesus. Yeah. So yeah. that's a lot to share. <laughs> yeah. Great. Mm. Yeah. And I mean, our Spanish show is so fun because, I mean, we're speaking our our mother tongue Spanish, which is yeah. the angelic um, language. <laughs> yeah, right. <In> the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but but it's fun. You know, I love being with Millie on our Spanish show because it's just it's so different than than what I'm doing in English. You know, English is more like theological or stories, and I love it too. But being mm-hmm. with Millie on the Spanish one, it's just like we're just sitting here, we're having a good time. It's almost like we open scripture and we say, "Wow, did you see what it says here?" It's kind of like what happened to us this week, or it's so fresh, you know. So I, I love what God is doing through, through that, and um, and I guess the obedience, you know, I see it in you, Grace, and I see it in you, Millie, like the the obedience of like I think God is trying to use me, and when you say yes, you know, now our mm-hmm. channel is growing more, and people are tuning in and subscribing and all of that, and mm-hmm. and it's a responsibility, right? But it also means like, oh, like God can use me, and God is opening these doors is not just me but i'm being obedient and and yeah. then you see the fruits of that so that's so cool mm. all mm. right so i'm gonna go to the other side of the studio and we're gonna wrap it up with the emojis and feel free to chime okay. in if you want to Millie, on on this side okay Uh-oh. okay grace from hallelujah podcast so according to you 
What is the most blasphemous idea out there? Uh, I would have to say progressive Christianity. It is it is disgustingly blasphemous. And the more I the more I watch videos of the progressive Christian pastors and people walking that out, it's it breaks my heart. But it's it's so unbelievably blasphemous. Wow! There you have it. Progressive Christianity, blasphemous. Skeptical emoji. Why are you still skeptical of, or where do you see skepticism played out? Mm -hmm. I love this one, and I think where I see it played out is in the apologetics realm. And I have been so, so interested in apologetics, and you know, when people have the questions about faith, about God, and what they're skeptical of, and then seeing that answered from a Christian perspective is, it's awesome. It's really cool. So yes, <laughs> love it. Inspired emoji. Where do you see inspiration or what gives you hope? What gives me hope is Jesus, but a lot of people loving Jesus all together and what he can do in all of our lives individually, but also as a whole. Nice. Holy emoji. What's a holy idea? I think a holy idea is just seeing a Christian man and a Christian woman woman married, serving God together, and just the beauty in that. That's what I just think of as the the most beautiful and holy thing. So, yeah. That is. That is. And lastly, the most divine idea you can think of. What I can think of and what I totally believe that we will get to one day is just seeing like millions of people just in a massive stadium, just all worshiping God and just the worship, the prayer, the words. And, you know, I think I think we'll see that in the revival days that we're coming into. But that is the most design or divine idea I can think of. So beautiful. my friends thank you for listening to this episode of christian podcast with beto gudiño and my wife millie <laughs> uh, i want to invite you again if you want to check out our website christianpodcast.com we're gonna have hallelujah podcast on our network page so visit us but grace if people want to check out your website your blog maybe your social media where can you point them to sure thing so one of the biggest places you can find me will be on instagram which is just at hallelujah podcast but you can also find my podcast on spotify apple podcasts as well and i've also got a website with a few resources and blogs which is just hallelujahpodcast.com love it okay there you have it my friends thank you for for listening to this episode or maybe watching this episode please like and subscribe rate this episode only five stars if you made it so far you can only rate it five stars okay <laughs> so i'll see you guys on the next one oh yeah